Hello, everybody. Welcome. This is your host, Fernando from Sellerboard. Today, I have a very special guest that's going to talk about image optimization on Amazon. His name is Justin Freiland. But before you watch the presentation, you have to go to sellerboard.com and try it out. You have all the tools for sellers on Amazon. Just click there. You can get a demo and you can start playing with the software right away. I'll see you at the end. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. I have a very special guest with me today. His name is Justin from PCO Studio, directly from Hamburg, Deutschland. He's going to talk <laughs> to us about emails on Amazon. Justin, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. It's an honor. Thank you. Very excited. My pleasure. My pleasure. So um, I'm going to go ahead with the first question that we always do. Uh, tell us your story. Yes, exactly. Of course, I already I checked out a few episodes, so I have an idea what's going, what's coming. Um, my story, uh, background in design for about 10 years. So I started with design pretty, pretty early with 14, uh, fell in love with Photoshop and stuff, and then found a second passion in marketing a few years later, and then dabbled in typical stuff like a, like a teenager does. Um, and then uh, found, uh, yeah, just st stole it over um, Amazon when I was like 22. Founded an agency, a creative creative agency, doing product images. Um, then developed a framework how to do database product images uh, that you can pretty much scientifically raise conversion rates over time, which went very very well. And now we're taking really that. Like that. <laughs> now we're taking that framework and onboarded a new partner in our agency who is. A seller himself um, he has the seller mind we have this new more modern thinking about creative stuff on amazon and now we're combining it in like a full service full stack um, agency where we are like a tactical unit for uh, for brands that are either focusing only on amazon or just um, outside of amazon and then we launch their amazon department for them so very profit driven very ppc driven very creative driven um, approach with the agency but today I would like to just talk about creative stuff only because I think there uh, it's a, there's a lot of lack still in the scene or it's lack of focus oh I like that tell me something uh, that background you're using can you show yeah. us that it's well is that's a real background or not <laughs> it is a background it is a, it's, it's a real background <laughs> It's my kitchen, my new apartment. Yeah, that's Very a beautiful that kitchen. That yeah. kitchen is like in 2030 already. Nice. <laughs> it is. It is. I'm very, very happy with it. Okay, so uh, where do you want to start? Um, if I'm, I don't know. I, I have something prepared, so I have a yes. Um, Please, like do you a... need to sh do you need to share screen? Do you need what do you need? Exactly. Exactly. I would I would need to share my screen and then I can uh, showcase the what I have prepared real quick. It, is everything visible? Yes, sir. Can you see? Perfect. Awesome. So basically, I have a small agenda. I'm talking about a bunch of stuff. Feel free to just ch uh, chime in, ask questions. Um, this is a, like a total open dialogue. Oh, I will. Don't worry. <laughs> okay, perfect. <laughs> so what are we going to talk about it's our approach pretty much that we've been using now for one and a half years um optimizing listings on a more data-based layer um, this will help you increase conversion rates this will help you decrease a cost and this will help you increase perceived value so these are like three things that are very very important to in, in today's age on amazon especially in niches where you are very price competitive review competitive this can give you a unfair advantage over mm -hmm. your competition especially in today's age because I've, I've posted something on linkedin a few weeks ago most chinese sellers are, now are updating their images and they are great they are insane these are not like 2012 images anymore that they're About using time. They, are better. they have better margins better better conditions so it's it's time for a lot of us or who's teaching uh, the chinese sellers all this stuff 
They have, I don't know, probably they have, they have good connections. <laughs> they have good connections. Um, nice. Yeah. So the agenda, quick introduction, what to focus on when optimizing images, um, to the tools that you have at tips, and then some quick examples. So nothing too complicated. Uh, this is basically where most of sellers are right now. So right here. Uh, low conversion rates, pretty expensive ad performance, and not real branding. And what with our with our with this approach, with our, which I'm going to present to you right now, you can maximize conversion rates, maximize ad prefer, uh, ad performance, and uh, introduce something like a branding. I'm always referring to branding on Amazon in like a, a parentheses because. Amazon is not built to build a brand. Amazon is for selling. But there are other aspects of branding besides the brand building aspect that have a positive impact on your selling performance. Before, mm -hmm. Because when, you, for example, if you're on a listing and you have, for example, a soap dispenser, like a super generic product, and you have a product that is just white background, different angles and with black, uh, are some USPs and on the other hand you have this cohesive experience through all the images and it's basically the same soap uh, dispenser the one with the great branding costs one dollar more oftentimes you're going to choose the one dollar more expensive one because the experience on that on that product page was much more high quality and you feel more safe to buy this product so in a way, this is branding. It's not really brand building, but it's it's increasing the perceived value. And if you're able to charge just by that, charge one dollar more on like a nine or ten dollar product, then this is already at the end of the year. It makes a huge, huge difference on the on the PLs. So uh, when I'm talking about branding, it's not like building a brand. You're not going to build the next Apple on Amazon. Um, it's that's not going to happen, but there are other aspects of branding that can uh, boost performance. So basically, what is the goal when optimizing a listing? The goal is to have a higher conversion rate and the possibility to sell at higher prices. That's it. That's mm -hmm. that's the only thing. You don't want to make it unnecessarily pretty. You don't want to make it fancy you just the only goal that's that people have to keep in mind is to get a higher conversion rate that's it and the possibility to sell at a higher price if possible how to Absolutely. do that <laughs> how to do that most efficiently is to only focus on placements that bring have the highest leverage so what we do in our agency um, when it comes to ppc seo and creatives we always work on the highest leverage first, and then we go down the list. So highest priority first, and then go down the list. And from our experience, and maybe you you have your own experience as well, we see that the most important visual placements on Amazon are the title images because it's visible everywhere. It's on the listing. It's on the category pages, the home page. If you're listed there, it's in the SERPs, it's in DSP, it's even in brand ads, it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, the gallery images as second, because when it comes to when it comes to optimizing, you want to optimize this, the thing that's not the fanciest and that could bring the most performance. You want to optimize the stuff that is the most visible. And what is the most visible? It's the gallery images when it comes to uh, conveying um, different types of information about a product. Mm -hmm. So that oftentimes we hear like a discussion between gallery images and A+. And I myself am a big um, defendant of gallery images because the visibility is so high. The people are clicking on it, swiping through all the way and not scrolling like two minutes <laughs> to find uh, to find the A+, plus some uh, sometime uh, on the bottom of the product page. So gallery images... For us, the, mo the second most important placement, and then the brand ads. Um, we are seeing great results in doing like really, really simple brand ad banners at the top with a small wording to the keyword that you're targeting. 
Yeah, it's it's a gray area. Is, but, in, is Mount Worthy on live plyo image? <laughs> yeah, Can well, we do it? it always depends. This is something where you'll have to know your niche. You have to know your niche. This is the same discussion with title images. In theory, you can only show your product on white background, but in practical in practical senses, there are so many ways to put go stuff around in that. the go around that. And and Amazon is very very knowledgeable about that because in some niches they just don't care at all. <laughs> but and then for example, other niches, uh, jewelry, clothing. Um, it's super strict. You can't mm -hmm. even, if the shoelace is placed wrongly on the title image, you're going to get flagged. But for example, uh, when it when it comes to furniture, for example, ma uh, mattresses, oftentimes the title image is a lifestyle image. Mm -hmm. You see like, you see like the whole bed with the whole bedroom <laughs> as a title image. So yeah. this says that Amazon in some niches is very, very strict. And some other niches, it's very, very loose. The same goes with the brand ads. If you're selling in a niche that is known to be very relaxed, then you can try this. I wouldn't bulk upload uh, 20 different creators for 20 different keywords. I would just try one first and see if something happens. From our experience, we of of course tell tell our clients that this is this is going in a in a, a undiscovered direction. But if they if they're fine to take some some kind of risk, then this works amazingly. It's it's like just showcasing. I don't know if I have something prepared about that. Uh, I don't think I have something here. But just showcasing, for example, if you have a um, pet fur remover. And you want to target the keyword pet uh, pet fur remover cat. You show a stock image of the cat, then you show the product as a rendered on the side, and then just some kind of small wording on the bottom. Or if you want to play it very very safe, the headline on the top, and talk about um, some kind of perfect for cats. And then on the side you have the carousel of the products, and this works. At best, you link to the storefront. This works like magic, because you're picking up when you when you're thinking about it from a customer journey perspective. You're picking up the people right at the top, directly to that pine point that they put in into Amazon. Mm -hmm. Pet hair remover cat, and then there's an image of a cat and the pet hair remover, and it's four cats. So um, it works very very well. So that's why we like to put that ahead of a plus. And then um, video ads in the US, it's getting rolled out even more and you get more impressions. Um, in Germany, it's still very limited. Um, you, you, you can't just spend like crazy amounts of money on a video ad um, because the visibility is just limited. And then stuff mm -hmm. like storefront and about the brand storefront. I would say 80% of people on Amazon still don't know how to access a storefront of a specific brand and um, on the product page, for example, and the about the brand section. It's always a question. If you're if you if you have a listing and you have great a great title images, six insanely good optimized gallery images, A plus, do you really need the about the brand section? Is it I mean I mean, come on, Apple sells insanely complicated MacBooks on a one pager. Uh, if they can do it, you can do it too. So um, that's like the our tier list of what the most important placements are on, on uh, Amazon when it comes to visuals. Your brain is 100% visual. Just for the presentation that you're doing, we never had the presentation so visual here on the channel, <laughs> and it just shows that uh, it just shows the 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 capacity that you have to really work on the image. I cannot wait to see some examples later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've been doing nothing nothing else than that for the last years, three years. So <laughs> it's it's been a very intensive deep dive. Um, so okay, when we when we've um, 
talked about like what's the goal so increasing conversion rates and how to how to be very efficient about it and do it in the right order mm -hmm. because people ask us sometimes man do i need to do like the about the brand section it's like no your images are bad do them first uh so that's like the thing so when you're going into the highest leverage um possible with product images um, then you have some kind of different tools at your fingertips. You have your photo assets. Do you have the model that you're choosing for the photo shooting? If you're, if you have to choose, uh, if you have to work with a model, you have the sales copy that you are including in your gallery images or in the A plus. This is now for all the, but I'm always referring to the gallery images. Sales copy. Then you have the displayed information that you're choosing. So what information are you showing? Um, and then you have the branding and the order of the images. So the combination of all those will determine your performance of your visual, uh, of, your, of your gallery images. And at best, you take all those tools and model them towards the pain of your target customer that you're trying to solve. So that's that's these are the basic principles of like sales funnels in the info product niche or in the e-commerce niche. Um, this is stuff that's been tested thousands and millions or tens tens of thousands of times of other marketers that are selling on their online shop or selling on. Uh, sales funnels for info products and these are like the principles that they use bear down um, and they the same stuff applies to to amazon so the question now shows what photo assets are good what model should mm -hmm. i use what sales copy should i use what this information should i show how should i build out the branding in a rough sense and what order of the images should i show um what how should i order them and the great thing is Amazon tells you, you just have to look and um, how you look, it's, it's pretty easy. Um, you look into either, you can do this with, with Helium. You can do this with, uh, I don't know if it's allowed to refer other software on here, but it's, it's not a seller broad competitor. Um, no, I'm allowed to use... be with us. Helium 10. Helium 10 no, we, <laughs> yeah, you yeah. have to use, you have to use seller board. Don't use yeah, the you have to. We use Celebrate as well. Big fans, by the way. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, you can use Helium 10. You can use, I'm personally a fan of Amylize. My partner, for example, is a big fan of Helium. So we just use our own tools. And then um, you can either some kind of a t keyword tool and some kind of a backwards search tool. That's basically it. And then you're going into, into, the, uh, into your product and um, find out what are people looking for and why are they looking for? What intentions are they looking for? And this now is like a very, um, I would say, dark place in today's marketing because you have to take numbers and put them into perspective with like human empathy. So <laughs> this is where you have to ask yourself some questions. Um, what are people thinking? What are people, what are the motivation of people uh, going on the platform and trying to buy? So it's taking the data. The buying then, Yeah, and, and turn it into buying intentions. And here's a, a, an example, um, which I've also um, uh, talked about with uh, Christian from Amelize. Uh, so this is a... This is a product that we've optimized, I think, uh, a year ago, and it's 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 my favorite case study. It's a trash can in the U.S. And um, when you do like a backward search, and this is just, I'm not going to go super deep here. I'm just going to give the idea of how to do the keyword analysis and the idea of how to look into the data and ask the questions that you should you're supposed to ask and then you mm -hmm. can you can do it for yourself at home it's, it's it's a lot of trial and error so just by looking at the backward search of this listing um we saw so uh before we optimize this this is the optimization so this is how it looks right now um we saw that this product is ranking on uh, retro trash can vintage trash can poop trash can for dogs 
pet waste bin, five gallon trash can with lid, poop can with lid uh, for, for outside, outdoor waste bin for dogs and dog poop trash can uh, odor control. So it doesn't smell. So this is a normal trash can. This is not supposed to be for dogs. This is not supposed to be for poop. But <laughs> uh, it, it turned out that it's ranking on that. And 30, 31% of the organic sales are coming from these two, four, six, eight, eight uh, keywords. Mm -hmm. And now, now it's time to dissect it. So the first few, uh, the first two are talking about the design. So this tells us that the design of the trash can is relevant. Then the next two are talking about the fact that this is uh, people are looking for a product where they can throw the, the poop bags of their dogs in. So this is important. So when people are looking for to solve this pain and you're ranking there, it, it's only logical if you're picking this up in your listing and telling the people that this is possible with this product, that your conversion, conversion rate is going to rise because people are feeling heard. People are, um, people are, feeling like they get picked up from the airport. It's always a nice service. So um, that's, a, that's a great thing. So, and then the next one, five gallon trash can with lid shows us which features about the trash can are relevant to people. Um, here, five gallon trash can with lid are searched by 2000 people a month. 2000 people are looking for this. They are looking for five gallons and a, with a lid. So five gallons is important for 2,000 people. And that some kind of connection to the lid is also important for 2,000 people. And then there's even more dog poop. And um, then you have uh, in the middle outdoor. So this is also important, place of use. And I really like that because I sell trash cans. I sell small trash cans. Oh, okay. Like tiny ones, yeah. That, that's a hit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And this is just the backwards search. What you can do now is you can take all those keywords and all the main keywords that are super, super high relevant, um, but you're not ranking as high. So for example, for this case, uh, just trash can in general, um, and those, and put it in something like the analyzer, uh, the entity search, or in the H10 magnet, and see what other keywords are connected with this keyword. And with all those data points that you can summarize uh, in a Google sheet or something, that's what we how we do it. Um, you can get the data set, you can get the foundation and then start to ask the questions. What keywords are most relevant to your product? What problem are you actually solving? And what product, uh, what problem uh, is your target audience looking for to be solved? Um, what does the customer need to know? This is a big one. This is very important. What does the customer need to know to feel safe to buy? This Because it's all about friction. It's all about friction. We want to keep out all the friction and make it just a smooth buying experience that the people can be held even driving <laughs> on the highway. And because people are doing this. Uh, and then just put it in, into cart and buy it because it's such, such an easy experience informing yourself about the product that um, that they just buy. Then what are other names and descriptions for your product? This is often not so relevant for a lot of people. Where do people use your product? A big one. Um, again, just in the first eight um, eight. Keywords from this from the trash can, we saw that people are looking for an outdoor solution. So this is already important. And as you can see, uh, when you do a more extensive keyword research, um, it showed that people, are, a lot of people are looking for indoor and outdoor for this product. Mm -hmm. What did we do? Can be used indoor and outdoor. So that's super important. Who uses your product? Um, who does your audience identi identify with? This is also a big one because, for example, if you're selling a product related, um, for example, in the pet niche, and you're you're directing a product towards a type of dog, for example, that oftentimes is um, old people have.
Now the question arises when you look at your tools, is it smart to have an old person in the product images or a lot of old people, a lot of seniors identify with children? They see their past. This is an emotional connection. So it is, mm. is it more smart to showcase a child playing with that dog than they connecting it with um with their grandchildren for example it's like a a, a joint a joint supplement the dog is getting older can't run as fast anymore maybe it's the emotional connection there to show a child with that dog breed playing like nothing would be like everyone is healthy so this is mm -hmm. like a big one as well who does your audience identify with for a trash mm -hmm. can oftentimes not so relevant this is more like for um, emotional products and then who buys the product oftentimes products are being bought by other people that for example if you have seniors a product targeted to seniors oftentimes the children buy it if you have mm -hmm. a pro product targeted to children oftentimes the parents buy it mm -hmm. so that's you always have to direct to the gatekeeper um, who's who's uh, doing the buying decision and this is not not saying that when you're selling toys that you're trying to show a Porsche <laughs> because you're you're directing it to to the gatekeeper. It's just showcasing what a parent wants to know about a toy. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and when you break it down, this I'll just go through it one by one. Um, all the tools that you have, um, these are the things that you can do. So for the title image, or do you have a question before that? No, no, go ahead. Okay. okay. Um, it has to be fully data optimized. This means the angle that you're showing should have a reason why you're showing that. Because you're showing that angle because for the trash can, it showcases the specific lid or it showcases the pedal, or it showcases the hook because the people are looking for a hook at the end. Or um, if the people are looking for variants, for example, trash can red, and you're selling a trash can in red, blue, green, and yellow, then it's important to showcase your variants because people are looking for different kinds of colors. And then showcasing features that are people looking for. For gallery images, um, and this is the same for A+, Showcase the product in a natural use case environment. Um, show the product um, fixing the problem of the people. This can be a logical problem. For example, if you need, if your toilet is clogged, um, it's I'm I'm in that topic right now with the poop trash can. <laughs> but if you if you have, for example, or like a a um, hose is broken showcase it being fixed if you have an emotional problem for example the joint tablet for the dogs then showcase the this problem being fixed you don't have to showcase the biological pro process of the of the supplements doing their thing you can just showcase that the dog is feeling better now mm -hmm. um and then show the emotion um that's a big one as well show the emotion which results um, or when you fix the problem, what emotion will come out of that? Show that. So, for mm -hmm. example, again, dog supplement, feeling free, running around, being happy. Um, or, for example, in the garden, um, being happy, happy that the something is fixed or anything like that. Then for the model, that's the, the easy one again, which what I already mentioned. Either show your target audience or what your target audience is relating to. Pretty easy. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes to the sales copy, this is something um, a lot of people are still not doing. And I can't get why. Because <laughs> if, if you're looking back into marketing in the last 100 years, it's been the same. Sales copy is, is the focal point of selling. Cigarette companies have... 50s in the in the newspapers um car companies have done it every for the for the last hundred years sales copy has been the thing and now you have 
people like Tony Robbins selling hundred, hundreds of millions of things in basically digital products just by the words he chooses and the brand that he has. Um, so sales copy is super important and people on Amazon are neglecting it as basically the only player in the internet space of selling is Amazon sellers are the only people that neglecting that space. Mm -hmm. So um, here are all the basic principles of sales copy and copywriting apply. And what I mean by sales copy is something like this and um, uh, something like that, that like picking the people up in the images and um, showcasing what the problem is being solved, um, just stuff like that. So we'll go into the examples afterwards again. But um, so telling the people how you can fix the problem or selling them the vacation, like selling them the result. Um, and that now that's what we've what we've come up with is including the keywords that the people are looking for in the sales copy. So they search, I mean, if you search something and people are picking the exact words up in the second image, would you feel heard? Would you feel listened to? Would you feel picked up? Probably, right? Yeah, so um it's it's just a just a great thing to do when you want to when you want to increase the com uh, increase the conversion rate is picking up the people with the keywords that they're looking for forming them into a nice sales copy that that showcases the product and sells the product um when it comes to displayed information what you can what you should show is stuff like because people it's still e-commerce you can't touch it you can't feel it you can't get a sense of it. So size, materials, use cases, and a big one, who is this not for? Um, this is something that people are still not, uh, like 99% of people are doing not doing this, especially, for example, in supplement niches and such, um, showcasing just who is this not for? Rather have a click and not a purchase than a return. So... Um, just showcasing, man, this product is for women between 20 and 60. And then you're all, all, you, the, all the returns that are from some dude are neglected. So that's, that's already a big win. And then um, branding already covered most of it there. Um, the goal here is not to build a brand. It's to have a high perceived value. Um, so coming up with a sense of it's not it, it doesn't have to be tough on amazon having a cohesive logo cohesive font color palette and then that combined with fitting product photography and good sales copy and that's already brand enough so we don't have to do like a whole ci uh, you don't have to do the whole apple brand building thing or like doesn't have to be that complicated it can be done quick and it can be done good but it doesn't mean that it if it's easy doesn't mean that it should be neglected what most people are still doing so that's a um that's a very important thing especially because of those points raises perceived value word to mouth marketing uh, makes your listing stand out especially in very um, saturated markets provides a feeling of safety and raises the chances of a cross sell, which are very rare, but uh, can happen on Amazon. So, and then the last, the last tool you have are the order of images. And this is where it comes from selling pieces everywhere to having complete a, to forming a sales funnel. And this is something we mostly do for the gallery images because again, visibility is just the highest. The people are on there, they're clicking on it and the images, boom, they're already there. And I just have to swipe through. So um, what is the product? That's the title image. What then the second image? What problem can it solve? Boom, first, um, that already either neglects the people that don't wanna buy and interest and hooks the people that wanna buy. Then how does it work? 
how big is it, what materials are using, and then you can go into like objection treatment one and objection uh, objection treatment two. That that is super uh, individual. So if you're selling a specific product and you know that people have doubts about it working or doubts about your quality or doubts about anything then you you should use those slots to uh, re-emphasize the feeling of safety here that those doubts are not relevant for that product um, and that the people are free, they, uh, feel can feel free and can feel safe to buy so that's um, and then at last uh, having a social that's been working also very well having a social proof image so showcasing people using the product at best a collab with actual customers using the uh, the product and then some kind of um, certificates some kind of placements and big uh, publications or um, some kind of um, un well, unfakeable social proof that can be something like units sold, um, reviews gotten, uh, cha uh, lives changed, uh, something like that. So, uh, for example, if if you can display 50,000 happy customers, no one's going to question you at the end, like your, your, your present. So that's that's already like a big win. And that's, as you can see, it's a funnel. What is your product? Super broad. What problem can it solve? Super broad. And then it goes down. How does it work? The people that see this image have showed interest. They want to know more. So you explain them. How does it work? What materials are being used? How big is it? Does it fit in my living room? Whatever it is. Um, and then then they they've learned more they've learned what it can solve they can learn they learn how big it is and then they then the doubts come up then the reasons come up not to buy it and then you go into that reason and you treat those reasons and cure those reasons and the people oh hey okay, my, my my doubts are gone i feel safe and then you hit him with the social proof at the end boom um so that's and this is everywhere this is no rocket science if you look at any any sales funnel of an info product. This is done there. This is, look at Apple's landing page. This is done there as well. So um, this is basic praxis. And this is just migrated towards Amazon that it works on Amazon. And if you do that, just picking up on the on the uh, uh, graph on the, uh, from the beginning, then you can, increase your conversion rate which will have this positive positive loop um, to increasing your ad performance and then your branding as well if your branding is great or not it should it's maybe not interesting to you if you're not just looking out for those positive um, impacts of, of a good branding but if you're looking to sell your brand sometime in the future aggregators are actually looking for that so um, you'll probably have you'll probably get like a better deal if you have a well-branded listing, well-branded listings with a good branded storefront, then aggregators oftentimes um, will be, will give you better rates. So nice. this is basically, this is basically the before, not for the products. This is just, I looked for five minutes for shitty product images on Amazon. This doesn't take long <laughs> um, and found some here. And then if you apply that and I guarantee I could, or we could do great listings for every single one of these products. Guess what, what kind of product is this on the bottom left? Um, uh, that looks like a smoothie. It's a protein shake. Okay, <laughs> very cool. <laughs> yeah, but it, I mean, come on. Um, terrible, so... <laughs> terrible, 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 terrible. And on the right, you can see this is this is like already branding enough. Like 
this purple background with the wave this is already branding enough for amazon the blue dark blue background with the gradient this this is enough but you don't need to overcomplicate it but this already makes these products look so much more high quality than the left that if you're comparing prices and the one is 50 cents or a dollar more expensive than the other especially if you're selling in a price range of 35 30 uh, 40 dollars and it's just 50 cents or a dollar difference and the one side is looking like that and the other side is looking like that and both have the same amount of reviews you're probably going to buy this one and this is going to make a huge 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 difference um at the end of the year so nice just to make it the quick recap or the quick finalization of the presentation and then i'm done um what are images, image types that have worked for us very well? Um, these are big captions. So showcasing the product, this is oftentimes the second image. So right after the title image, just showcasing the product, what it does, what, what it can solve. Oops, um, what it can solve. Pretty simple. No design award will be handed to me for this because this is super simple, but it works. So, um, and it looks clean, looks high quality, done. Then uh, what, what I've mentioned from uh, the last image, so the social proof, uh, trusted quality, featured in Men's Journal, for example, 13,000 happy customers. Uh, this is German, unfortunately. Um, this means like from profession, used by professionals um, and then with the certification, picks people up. Then the next one, which also works, um, is uh, especially because on, for mobile dimensions, is the three-piece collage, either with text or without, just showcasing, for example, you're saving three images here, image slots here, if you would put it on white background, just the back, showcasing the leather touches, done, that's, that's it. There's no need for a branding, uh, for a word in here. You could say high quality leather, but you can tell it's high quality leather by the image. So it's not necessary. Mm. Then for example, showcasing the different kinds of carrying methods. For Sorry, I was muted. Can you take pictures too? Can you take pictures too on your service? Mm. Uh, we used to, we used to do that, uh, but it's a logistical nightmare if you do it on scale. So uh, we've, we've um, put that out, but we, for our clients, oftentimes the, that's, that's, the, that's the most amazing thing about it. Oftentimes the brands have great assets, but they don't use it. Oh my we have, God. We have clients that have That's crazy. thousands of images. They have photo shootings done in like New Zealand. Mm -hmm. And then they don't use it. They go for the white, white background images on Amazon. So it's 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 fairly insane. But even though you can do it also with 3D renders, which we we also offer. Um so Getting like a nice, for example, if you're selling trash cans, um, you can go on Turbo Squid and buy like a room, like a living room, 3D rendered. And then you let people can render your product, model it, put it in that room, take a photo in 3D like that, and it looks real. So um, for especially for products that are not emotional, that don't need like real models, uh, it's super easy to do the render or even with stock images. The great, the, the only thing you have to look out with stock images is you can't just keep Photoshopping the product in hands of people. <laughs> it, it, it looks fake. Just stop doing this. You have to use stock photos in a good <laughs> sensical manner. This, these three. You're are stock absolutely images. right. These three right here, the dog, the woman and the man are stock images. It works. You just have to make it not look totally horrible. So, um, yeah, the three piece collage. Then the typical one is like the bullet point image, having like a large wording on the top and then showcasing three relevant informations that you've um, looked out for in the, in the keyword research. Then classical before and afters. Um, also super simple, but make a huge difference. And then again, size and materials. And this is also very important when it comes to size, 
always just showcase the relevant sizes. If you're selling supplements, don't showcase how big the jar is. Showcase how much, how many tablets are in there. It's not relevant showcasing how big the, the, the jar is. You don't, you, you want to showcase how long is this uh, treatment going to go for me? When do I have to buy a new ones? Okay, there are 62 tablets in there. So I need to have to buy every one, every two months. Um, so this is important. For example, for this bag, um, materials, we showcase leather. We showcase that there are um, four outside pockets, the, the weight and the size, because this is a product that needs a lot of explanation. But then, um, for example, here, all the size, that's it. You don't need to showcase anymore. And for example, for supplements, that's what we, we recommend doing is something like that. Um, especially if you have something with more clarification when it comes to size. Uh, for example, you need half a tablet if you're this heavy and two tablets if you're this heavy, then do it like this. Give the people the information they need to feel safe. So um, that's basically it. So when it comes to the takeaways, there are basically only two. Um, look at your data and then with that, find out or know what people are looking for. Mm -hmm. What the, the main thing is, what are pe people trying to solve and tr or trying to achieve? Every single one on Amazon that is searching something, it can be any product. And people always say, oh, it's not, it's not relevant in my case. It's relevant in your case. Um, it's like, even if you're selling like decor, then people are trying to solve their boring home or their anesthetic home then mm -hmm. go to that pain. So it's, it, for every single one, they are trying to solve anything or achieve any uh, anything. So and then um, use, use all your tools that I've mentioned. So model, product images, um, sales copy, and so on. And focus these points onto your customer avatar. And then the second, um, second recap is only focus on placements that bring performance and are the most visible first. You can think about optimizing your storefront sometime at the end. Do your title image and gallery images first, and then, um, or the about the brand section. You can do them in the future, but um, do those two at first. If you wanna skip that and go to A+, that's fine, but uh, no need to focus all your attention on video ads right now. This is uh -huh. gonna stay. And it's going to be developing over time. But these four, I would say, are still the most relevant. So focus on those first. And that's pretty much it from my side. Nice. Let me ask you something. How do people get yeah. in contact with you? Uh, they can just hit me up on LinkedIn, I would say is the best. Uh, Justin Freuland. I can just, because my last name is a bit weird, people will probably find me like that. Um, super easy. Uh, and other than that, on our website, I don't want to do too many plugs. You can just, uh, that's our website. Just write an email if you if you don't have LinkedIn. And I'm can, you, can you open your website so we can take a look at it? Of course. Oh, there it is already. Uh, um, yeah. Okay, cool. So, yeah, we are basically um, like a full, full the, the word full service has such a negative term, I think. Um, but yeah, we're we're full service, full service agency. Uh, we do everything from listing optimization, PPC strategy, um, everything that people need. So yeah. Um, nice. Nice. Justin, thank you very much for being here. Yes. I loved your contacts. I think I may have some people for you. And yeah, and <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, guys. I'll see you guys in the next video. You wait because I have to talk to you. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Okay. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Have a great day. And that was our interview with Justin Freiland from PCO Studio. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, you have to go to Seller and start your trial right now. You start playing with the software. We have a demo 
and you're going to see all the tools that you need to be successful on Amazon. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.